I wanted to talk to you about a couple cool things in Procreate. These are 10 tips for using Procreate. This is not a beginner's course. This is just some quick, fast tips um, that may help you in your workflow when you're illustrating. The first one is the shape tool. It kind of automatically makes shapes for you. You just have to draw something that looks like it so it can pick it up. So if I'm drawing a circle, um, and I'm having a really hard time drawing a full circle. I don't have to worry about it because Procreate will help me out. So I'm gonna draw a circle and I'm holding my pen down the entire time until it snaps when it meets back. And you see it says ellipse created. Then I'm going to edit shape and hit circle. Now I have a perfect circle. You can do this with any shape. You can do this with a rectangle. You just have to make sure that it mostly looks like the shape and it'll fix it up for you. It's a really cool tool, and um, I find it really helpful, especially with drawing circles, because it can be hard to do that. The same thing can be said for lines. So if I want to draw a straight line, I'm having a hard time, all I have to do is hold it down, and it'll automatically snap into a straight line. And as long as my pen's down here, I can move this line up and down. So let's go back to our circle. The second thing I wanna talk about is, and I think most people know this, but when you want to color something in, all you have to do is hold it down, sorry. Uh, now it's the color I don't want, pink. Drag it and drop it into your shape and it'll color it. Super cool, easy to do. Another cool feature that was just added, um, I am working in the 2020 Procreate version. I think this is version five. And it does change a bit. So um, if, if you're watching this like a couple years in the future, um, it might be a little different. I If I wanna add a new color palette, I can use this little plus sign here and I can create a new color palette just by myself or I can do it from my camera so I can take a picture of something that I like the color palette on. You can grab one from file, say if you purchased a color palette from somebody else. And then you can also do it from photos, which is really cool. So I just selected that invitation suite photo and it brought up all the colors in it. It's a really neat feature and I enjoy using that, especially when I'm having a hard time with inspiration. I'll just go outside and find some flowers that I love and snap a photo and I can grab the palette from that. The next thing about dealing with color is if you want a fully saturated color, so instead of just going like this and trying to find what you want, if you want it fully saturated, like a fully saturated black, you just double tap and it'll grab that for you automatically. Same thing with white, same thing with red, or this kind of hot pink color. Eraser tool, so sometimes when I'm working, say I'm working with um, the studio pen, and I want my eraser tool to be the exact same uh, brush as the one that I'm using. Instead of having to go into my erasers and find the same brush, all I need to do is just hold down my finger and as you can see, it says erase with current brush. And then I'm using that same brush. Flipping masks are a great way to add interest to what you're working with. So a lot of times you can have everything look really flat if you aren't using some kind of textured. If you're just filling in colors, things can look flat. So a great way to add in texture is to add a layer and then I'm going to click on this layer and click on clipping mask. What the clipping mask is going to do, because this layer is on top of this pink circle, it's only, when I start using the brush, it's not going to go on the outside. It's only going to stay inside of this circle. So if I come over here and I grab, let's do the carbon stick, and then I grab maybe kind of a light, light pink. And since I'm on my clipping mask, when I start, I'm gonna increase this. When I start doing this, it's really nice because I'm just coloring. I'm going over the circle, but it's only staying inside of the circle. Now, if I was to take the clipping mask off, let me make my background a different color so you can see what's gonna happen here. If I was to take this off, you can see it's all on the outside. But as soon as I make it a clipping mask, it clips down to whatever the shape was beneath it. 
And you can go ahead and combine those layers if you want. Otherwise, you can turn it off and on. Oops. And speaking of layers, layers, if you don't know, are super important to work with and I highly recommend them, especially because when you start to do your artwork, you want things to be on different layers so you can pull them apart from each other. If I am, let me grab a inking brush. Say I'm, you know, I want these green leaves. I have these green leaves and obviously I'm not taking very much time for this, but I have them on a layer and then let's say I want to add little white flowers. Well, if I had the white flowers on the same layer, I wouldn't be able to remove them. But if I add another layer, I'm just working on that layer. Think of it like sheets of paper that are stacked on top of each other. And I'm able to remove this and not and leave this. But if everything is together, I can't remove them and they're stuck together. So using layers allows you to have lots of options in your artwork and if you don't like something, you can just easily take it away. So if I was like, you know what, I don't like those white flowers, I can just either turn off the layer, hide it, or I can delete it completely. So definitely utilize layers, they are your best friend. Another cool thing, if you don't know, are the time-lapse videos. So if you're doing your artwork, you can export a time-lapse. You can share it on your social media. Um, sometimes I just like to watch them because they're really interesting. So all you do is you go to this little wrench icon and you can see my time-lapse recording was on. I always have it on. And you can export the time-lapse video, full length or 30 seconds. Um, and you can export it to, you can text yourself, you can email yourself. I think it even allows you to export it directly to social media. And this is the time-lapse replay. They're really fun to watch and it's a cool way for your, if you are sharing on social media, for people to kind of connect to you that way. And people love watching that kind of stuff, especially because nobody has any patience these days. The other tool I want to talk about is, um, since I'm a calligrapher, I mean, you can use this tool as an artist in any capacity, but I do a lot of lettering and um, sometimes I really, it's just, I have a hard time laying everything out. So let's say I wrote this out, you got. So I wrote something out and, you know, maybe I'm happy with the way that this looks, but I'm not happy with where this is. What I'm going to do is come up to this tool right here and I have freehand selected and I just have these marching ants that I draw around. It's like the lasso tool if you guys are familiar with Photoshop. And now... I can move this around because it's completely surrounded. I'm gonna hit this arrow button so you can see the arrow and this free um, transform is selected. And now I can move this wherever I want. It is such a cool tool. Um, you can do this with your illustrations. It's really helpful for lettering when I'm trying to line things up so they look good. Um, it's a fantastic tool, so definitely utilize that one. And then my last tip is just to purchase brushes. Uh, Procreate comes with a set of brushes, but you can really expand your talent and your um, just how, how you use Procreate by buying somebody else's brushes. For example, I bought these calligraphy nibs from a calligrapher and they are fantastic brushes and pens. I'm able to do calligraphy 
that looks like the calligraphy I do by hand. Whereas if I just went with the calligraphy pens that were available to me on Procreate, I would not be able to do that. So definitely look into buying brush sets. You can buy, there's brushes, there's different textures that people offer. There are so, so many options. They're um, on Etsy, Creative Market. You can find them in a lot of different places, but those are the places that I look. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about Procreate or there's something that you would like to see, please let me know.